All right, so this very quick video is just a wrap up to um, cover the entire process. Now that I kind of like show you all the steps, I just wanted to to give you a sense of how quick this workflow actually is without you know explaining things too much. I'm just gonna go through uh, what I would do if I'm not kind of like recording a tutorial just to show you how, again, how fast this process is and just kind of like do a recap of the tools. So here we have the character inside ZBrush. Um, it is in an A pose. I have subdivision levels. I have four sub tools and obviously, you know, details in the high subdivision level. I also have UVs and textures already. But again, as I mentioned in previous videos, you don't have to. The only thing that I would recommend at this point is to have the uh, UVs so that you can work symmetrically in a different software. All right, so as a step one, I'm gonna send everything to Character Creator to rig it. I have that open in here. And as you can see, this is, actually, let me go to new project just to show you this is a, a clean slate, right? Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on all, click continue, and this is going to send, or the, uh, the connection between ZBrush and Character Creator 4 is going to send this entire set of tools in the lowest subdivision level to Character Creator. I want to select Create Prop for all of them, and that's what I want. Basically, the default settings, Update Mesh, and Texture, just because I have Texture, otherwise you don't have to. Uh, merge all props, match CC model scale, click Update, and we will have the exact same character that we have in ZBrush, but in Character Creator. Now, you might also see, and I mentioned this in previous videos, that it is not necessarily in the, you know, kind of like touching the floor, and you can see that uh, cast shadow, but that's not a problem. That's gonna be fixed once we add the rig. Okay, so now that we have this, I'm just gonna go ahead and select all the parts that I want to include in my rig. And in the Modify panel, um, if you don't have this, you can go to Window and bring it in from here or with F6, and I'm gonna click on AccuRig. So as you can see, everything moved up a little bit, and now we are in AccuRig. Depending on how many subtools you have, you might want to, again, just select all meshes or just selected meshes. I covered that in previous videos. So in this case, I'm gonna select all of them, create guides. Now we have these points that we can arrange. I'm not gonna tweak anything for these points. I'm gonna use the default uh, placement of these uh, joints and then just carry on. So I wanna have uh, four fingers in this particular case. As you can see, we have only four and create this skeleton. That's it. And we have a pretty decent placement automatically for the fingers. It's not perfect. Again, I'm not going to go through it, but um, yeah, it, it looks pretty decent to me. So let's go ahead and click on bind skin. Perfect. So that finished. And now I'm going to check the animation. So I'm going to click on check animation and we can go ahead and assign maybe a walk cycle. So let's go walk and let's play it. Perfect. Even with the default settings, this looks pretty decent to me. Of course, we have to go through the process of tweaking the mesh, and if you want to be more precise about the, um, the deformation of the fingers and all of that, that's all covered in previous videos. But as you can see, this takes literally no time, and if I want this pose, if I want to keep this one, all I have to do, again, is go, let's go ahead and get out of Accurate. So I'm going to click on that, and again, I'm going to apply or enable this walk um, animation. All right, so now that we are out of the auto rig, now we literally have a rig that we can edit. So we can just select this from the modify, edit pose, select a hand or something like this. Perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and in the scene, we're gonna select everything, right? Select the go see again. And this time I'm not gonna create, I'm gonna relink go Z. Perfect. Now we have the pose and we have all the subdivision levels for all our subtools. So if I select, oops, if I select the head, for example, I have five subdivision levels with all the details and the pose, which is great. Now, the other thing that I cover as well was the pose manager, uh, but I'm not gonna go through that. I just wanted to literally give you a, a final wrap up of the entire process just to show you how quick this process is once you know all the steps that I cover in all the previous videos. All right, so now I'm gonna jump into a quick time lapse where I'm going to focus on a couple of poses for the final presentation of this character using the tools, the techniques, and the workflow that I explain in this tutorial series.
All right, so that's about it. I have a couple of poses that I like, uh, and I just decided to add this uh, kind of like shaft or walking stick or, you know, <laughs> I, I still have, haven't decided what to do with this, but the focus was uh, on the character and the, you know, the communication between CC4 and Zero. So I'm going to leave this uh, video here. I just wanted to show you the final pose um, that I want to use to present this character. The other one as well that I have still in Character Creator 4 um, is kind of like a defending pose. I don't know, maybe someone is attacking it. So that's kind of like, you know, a more extreme pose to show the, the versatility of the software. And of course, uh, for the final one, uh, I'm just going to go through the process of uh, tweaking these type of things and this distortion, um, the intersection, all of those things. But that's something that I would spend time doing in ZBrush if I want to use this pose for the final presentation. But like I said, um, I kind of like this one, something that showcase the character and the, and the work on the character a little bit better. Uh, this one is more to show the versatility of the, the rig and uh, how simple it is. And I, of course, I use part of the content inside Character Creator to create this type of things. Uh, one thing that I should mention and that I want to make sure that you are aware of is that if for some reason you lose your, um, your A pose, right? For whatever reason, let's say if you turn this off and the post doesn't appear there or you lose it in somehow, maybe when you save a different file, it just, it is lost. As long as you have the connection uh, between ZBrush and Character Creator 4, you can recover it. And all you have to do is go to Character Creator 4 and, you know, select any pose that you have, any file that you have, uh, as long as you have the, the rig, right? So you can go to this uh, button right here called Remove, select this drop down and go to restore bind pose. So this bind pose is the one that we use when we actually created the uh, the rig. So you will be able to go back to this uh, kind of like default pose or a pose and select everything, send it back to ZBrush and that's your basic uh, calibration pose, if you will. All right, and that's about it. And hopefully this series of videos give you an idea of the workflow, how to use uh, ZBrush with Character Creator 4 and the really easy but powerful workflow between the two programs um, and how you can sort of like obviously manage the, the poses from one to another. So again, I'm going to leave it here and hopefully this has been of help. Cheers.